Um, so first I thought it might be helpful to understand a little bit about the organization. Um, CIFAR is the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. We're a global research organization based in Toronto, Ontario in Canada. We bring outstanding researchers from across disciplines and borders together to identify and address some of the most important global challenges facing science and humanity. So for over 40 years, we've been advancing knowledge to create change in society, in industry, and in government um, across a range of CIFAR programs that we'll take a peek at in a minute. <clears throat> Um, see, in terms of our approach, it's a fairly unusual model. We take a long-term view to supporting research programs and research questions. All of our programs are um, problem-oriented, and we focus on larger-scale impact over um, incremental scientific advancements. So our programs operate on five-year renewable terms, currently with no sunset clause. And we do that because we believe that it does take time um, for, for programs to, to develop a shared uh, sense of direction, the kind of trust and, and reciprocity and relationships um, to really um, advance uh, important goals. Um, our programs meet in person two to three times per year uh, for meetings, closed or invitation only meetings of about two to three days each. A program is comprised of approximately, when it's kind of all staffed up, about 25 fellows. Again, these are globally distributed, so really important to understand. This is not a residential fellowship. Um, fellows and global scholars remain in residence at their home institutions and join a CIFAR program, um, in this instance as a global scholar, for a period of two years. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about what all of these things mean as we go forward. Um, but first, I want to just, uh, again, take a take a look at kind of under the hood and understand what CIFAR is. So looking ahead at um, uh, our supporters, uh, CIFAR is funded by a range of, of different organizations and institutions across government, across Canada's federal and provincial government, the private sector, um, as well as through a host of different research partnerships. At present, CIFAR is supported by the governments of Canada, Alberta and Quebec, uh, foundations, individuals, corporations, and Canadian, um, as well as international partner organizations. All right, so I promised we'd take a look at our research programs now. Um, we have 15 programs in our research portfolio. The programs highlighted in red are hopefully not surprising to anyone joining us today, the four that are recruiting for CIFAR Azrieli Global Scholars this year. Three of these are our brand new programs having only uh, been started in April of this year. So that would be uh, Future Flourishing, Humanities, Urban Future, and the Multiscale Human. Um, and they are joined in good company by Gravity and the Extreme Universe, a longstanding uh, CIFAR program that's recruiting um, its, I think, third or fourth cohort now of uh, global scholars. Probably uh, worth noting as well, just as we're talking about the programs, that all of our programs uh, do take turns. Um, they they uh, uh, recruiting global scholars, roughly speaking, every other year, um, although there's some idiosyncrasies there as well. All right, so what does it mean to be a CIFAR Azrieli Global Scholar? This is a unique opportunity to interact, to network and collaborate, as I mentioned already across disciplines um, and geographies with world leading researchers uh, in your own academic uh, disciplines or adjacent fields. We view a critical component of the Global Scholars Program being an opportunity to expand your network, um, to interact with, engage, and meet people with whom you wouldn't ordinarily have the chance to work with, either um, at the kind of standard set of academic meetings that you go to, perhaps because you're an experimentalist and, um, and they're a theorist, for example, but also across the Global Scholars Co 
cohort kind of we, one of the things that we're really looking to do is introduce cohorts of um, early career researchers that are all going through a similar experience at the same time but in drastically different fields um, and yet kind of there is a shared shared experience through the program you have access to mentorship um, uh, from either the the senior fellows or advisors in the program, as well as uh, leadership and communication training. We'll uh, more on that in a moment. Um, through the program, you have the opportunity to gain cross sector exposure if you're so inclined. Um, so there's a lot in the program that that is going to be the same for everyone. But there's then a couple of opportunities that I like to think of more as sort of a choose, choose your own adventure. So you can um, really self guide um, to capitalize on the opportunity as much as you uh, have the bandwidth for. Um, through the program, uh, we believe that global scholars are become well positioned to be really influential leaders and change agents, both within the academy, but also outside um, uh, in other industries as well or sectors. So moving on and taking a look at at who uh, can can apply and what our eligibility criteria are. In order to apply, uh, you must hold a PhD or equivalent. If you're in a field where a PhD is not required to have a faculty position um, uh, and you're unsure if, if you're just go ahead and reach out to us. Um, uh, but uh, but otherwise, um, let's let's take a look at the other the other criteria as well. Um, we say that you should be within the first five years of a full-time position at an institution of higher education um, or research. Importantly, what we're really looking for here is that you have responsibility for conducting an independent program of research and supervising as well as teaching trainees uh, who are uh, working towards the completion of a degree. Uh, if you've taken a leave of absence, uh, for for any reason, so maybe you're not uh, within those first five years anymore. Again, send us a note. We'll take a peek at your CV um, and confirm eligibility for you. Um, we are uh, ultimately looking to be as inclusive as possible, but within the the sort of the the parameters that we've set out for the program. Uh, we expect candidates to engage in research that complements the themes of the goals of a recruiting CFAR research program. This one is really important. If your research has nothing to do with any of the four recruiting programs and you see another CFAR program that's a slam dunk opportunity for you, make sure that you're signed up um, for our uh, mailing list so you can know when that program is recruiting. Um, it is a fairly detailed application process and I wouldn't recommend that you apply just for the sake of it if there's a program that better suits your own research that will be recruiting in a, in a future year. We do expect um, uh, everyone who becomes a shortlisted candidate be available to attend a virtual interview between March 20th and 21st, 2024. These dates are really important and they're non-negotiable, unfortunately. Um, so if you are even thinking about applying um, and you use a calendar, why don't you go ahead and mark those dates off just to make sure that you're available now um, uh, and, uh, and there won't be any problems. Um, should you be selected as a global scholar, it's really important that you have a valid passport and be able to obtain travel visas. So if you are in a kind of a precarious situation where you can't leave the country where you are um, for whatever reasons, um, maybe you're waiting on a, a green card, for example, um, or some other kind of long term uh, uh, permanent residence. Um, talk to us and let's try and understand kind of what what your constraints would be before you decide whether you should or shouldn't apply. Again, we are here to really help make sure that this is a, a seamless process for you. Um, so ask as many questions as, as, as you have along the way. Um, we do expect um, uh, participants to be fluent in spoken and written English both our selection process, but also critically our program meetings um, are conducted in English. Um, and, and so that's a, a pretty core element of uh, participation. 
Um, moving on to kind of additional core components of the program. So we've talked about eligibility. Now let's understand what it is. So I mentioned earlier um, that you'd be applying directly to a CIFAR research program. These are, again, interdisciplinary collaborative networks. They're totally virtual networks. Everyone stays where they are. We bring you together for in-person meetings two to three times per year. Um, so you're applying directly to one of those programs. All of our programs, as I mentioned, recruit on a rotational basis. As a global scholar, you'll have the opportunity to focus uh, on leadership development training opportunities in areas including, and I'll get into greater detail here in a minute, communication skills, hiring and retaining a research team, and other topics. You'll also have the opportunity to develop, to develop new skills for increasing the potential impact of your work through engaging with non-academic audiences, as well as through identifying and engaging with a mentor in your selected program. What does it mean to participate in a CIFAR research program? So tour, uh, during your two-year term, CIFAR Azrieli Global Scholars receive one hundred thousand um, dollars Canadian in undesignated, unrestricted research support. Uh, really important to understand in your uh, uh, application, you're not writing a grant proposal. You don't have to tell us what you're going to do with the money as you would in a kind of a more traditional um, uh, CFP. Um, we are, and, and we'll kind of, we'll go through the, the core components of the application in a moment um, to better understand the kinds of questions that we're asking and what we're looking for. You'll participate in a program meeting. I've mentioned this several times already. Again, you'll have the opportunity to identify and select a mentor from across our community of fellows and advisors. And I would say that you can also include um, a request for a mentor outside of your CIFAR research program. Uh, if you are a truly interdisciplinary scholar or have ambitions to move in a different direction and there's a just a perfect fit across our network in another program, we'd be more than happy to make those introductions. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to collaborate on new research uh, with CIFAR fellows and other uh, global scholars, either in your own research program or across other programs. <laughs> through a seed funding uh, opportunity that we introduce very early on in the program. Through the CIFAR Azrieli Global Scholars Program, we focus on strengthening your leadership and your communication skills. Topics explored through Global Scholar annual meetings and through our virtual workshops, which occur throughout the year, are identified by Global Scholars directly. We do regular pulse checks with our community to understand their perceived needs and the topics that they wish to explore. In addition to these group opportunities, you may also wish to pursue self-directed experiences and we provide additional funding and support to enable you to do that. Uh, so during your two-year term, you will be invited and, and we, we hope that you'll participate in an in-person annual meeting as well as uh, virtual workshops with ha which happen throughout the year. Obviously, there will be a virtual uh, workshop at some point that just collides with your teaching schedule and you miss it. When we're able, we, um, we do record them uh, and make them available to our whole community as well as learning resources. Through the Leadership Development Fund, as I mentioned, you'll also have the opportunity to identify things that you want to pursue on your own. Um, and uh, and if there's something that, that you know, a particular skill or an area that, that is important to you, um, you should always feel that you could come forward to us to ask um, for help uh, finding that and, and we can you know, do what we can to make it happen. So moving along um, to the spring of 2024, uh, we'll assume that you've been selected as Global Scholars and we're uh, approaching our next leadership development uh, um, workshop. That would be the, the Global Scholars Annual Meeting that will be in June of 2024 in Victoria, British Columbia. 
We're anticipating hosting um, various sandpit sessions to brainstorm new ideas for seed funding across and between the Global Scholars community. Uh, there will be a media training workshop at, at the annual meeting next spring, um, as well as opportunities to strengthen and develop peer networks and peer mentorship. I think that's another kind of critical component of the Global Scholars Program. Uh, and there will also be you know, optional um, other activities. We, we try and do you know, an, an excursion and, um, and just kind of give, give Global Scholars an opportunity to explore um, the, the surrounding area wherever we are. And again, as I mentioned, we'll be in British Columbia next spring. Um, all right, so I've mentioned a couple of times that we offer virtual workshops. The virtual workshops are... Um, uh, they, they run throughout the year on a variety of topics. Again, these are always identified by, um, by the Global Scholars community. Themes for the workshops that we've done in the past have included managing your science team, uh, setting goals, giving feedback, and evaluating scientists, um, uh, and then something totally different from that, the art of effective negotiation. Um, Leading, uh, leading scientific teams and project meetings, uh, hiring and retaining your team, uh, thinking styles and influencing styles, core principles of data visualization, um, as well as writing op-ed uh, uh, op-eds. Uh, and we engaged uh, a group called the Op-ed Project, who it was were a absolutely phenomenal resource um, for our global scholars community. Several of whom. Uh, went on to write op-eds um, and have them placed in in local uh, news newspapers. <clears throat> uh, if so, I wanted to give a little bit of a sense of of what the kind of the the interpersonal or the one on one leadership development opportunities might be. So we offer leadership development funds that scholars can access by sending a note to uh, to the Global Scholars Program and saying, "I really want." to um, have editorial assistance on this op-ed or on the manuscript um, or the prospectus that, that I'm working on before I send it off to a publisher. Is that something you can help me with? Absolutely. Um, uh, we've, uh, we already have a fairly uh, significant um, uh, database of opportunities, but we're finding that as global scholars have more and more um, diverse needs um, that that we're kind of constantly building and looking for new opportunities as well. So in, in North America, we've had several global scholars uh, participate in the faculty success program, if you're familiar with that, um, as well as other um, kind of leadership assessments. Um, so several global scholars um, recently have done uh, 360 leadership assessments where uh, members of their kind of extended network get uh, surveyed and then you go over the results of that survey with a coach um, to learn more um, about, about sort of what your strengths and opportunities for growth might be. Um, in, uh, so in, uh, moving on beyond leadership development, I've mentioned once or twice already that um, a core component of the program is is um, enabling global scholars to increase their impact in and out of academia. Um, so during, during your two-year term, uh, CIFAR Azraeli Global Scholars have the opportunity to put the expertise, the leadership training directly into action through participating in the organization of summer and winter schools. Um, uh, I have mentioned several times publishing op-eds, uh, giving public lectures. Um, maybe you've won an award that comes with a public lecture and you want to build Build a you know your own kind of social media brand around yourself for the first time in your career. We can help you do that as well. Um, so these are all examples of, of of ways that you can kind of engage and start to build impact um, beyond the, the kind of scholarly uh, um, impact of of your individual work. <laughs> Pardon me. All right, so let's take a peek now um, at the the kind of the nuts and bolts of the program. Um, so first and foremost, if there's, if you are thinking about applying, let's all set a calendar reminder, October 30th, 1159 PM Pacific daylight time, uh, is, 
is the is is the the, the deadline. Um, applications must be submitted online using our the application form um, and our online submission system. Uh, a major uh, component of our selection process and something that runs throughout the, the application and selection is our commitment uh, to EDI. CIFAR um, uh, recognizes that, and this kind of is part and parcel of being a, a global network. Uh, we recognize that bringing together individuals from multiple and diverse backgrounds, perspectives, and experiences is integral to advancing excellence and increasing the impact of our organization. Um, and we do we ensure that that every person who's a part of our network feels valued and welcome and is and that we believe that this is vital to achieving our mission. It embodies our values of diversity and creativity, excellence, risk taking, respect and collaboration. Um, we do try our hardest to include those um, participants from underrepresented groups in research and uh, we also aim to create a culture that embodies um, uh, principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion in all aspects of our work. And you'll see that running through the application process. All right, so what is the application process? Uh, there's a summary section. Uh, the summary uh, should really present the value that you anticipate from the CIFAR Azrieli Global Scholars experience. Aside from the unrestricted money, what is it that you're most looking forward to to being a part of this network? You'll provide a brief statement about the three areas of leadership or communication that you most wish to strengthen. This is the first time um, out of many that you get to tell us the areas that you're interested in exploring through leadership development. We'll ask you to provide a brief statement about how your skills and knowledge will contribute to advancing our commitments to EDI. And we'll ask for a short description of your research interests using lay terms for a general audience. Uh, moving on from the summary section, in our detailed section, um, we will ask you to, pro to provide a discussion of your research background, your proposed future directions. This is not, again, as I mentioned, intended to be a, a grant proposal. You're really talking about how you complement the research program that you're applying to, where there are synergies. Maybe there are gaps that you think are fundamentally important to the conversation that the program is trying to have. That is your place to tell us about those. We're looking for a discussion of how you've engaged with non-academic communities or how you want to engage with non-academic communities to extend the impact of your research. And hopefully, coming as no surprise, we ask for an up-to-date copy of your CV, um, including a full publication list. Uh, critical to note that you do have to, to upload this as a PDF, and it literally has to say .pdf. It's a little idiosyncrasy of our of our process. Um, you want to make sure that that, that, that happens um, uh, to, to avoid any problems down the line when you go to submit. Um, looking ahead as well, uh, the application does include letters of reference. It, critical also to note your application must include the required recommendation letters directly submitted by your referees before it can be submitted as final. <laughs> um, you have to arrange to have the letters of recommendation submitted to your online application. You'll insert somebody's email address, they'll get a request. Um, they should be able to log on without incident. If and when someone has a problem, they can come to us and we'll help them. Um, the one notable exception, if you're asking a CIFAR program member, so a fellow, an associate fellow, or an advisor who's a current member of the program that you're applying to, to provide a letter, then your application must include three letters. We will only accept three letters from someone who has one of the three as a, a current program member. If you if you have three uh, referees, none of which are members, we will only accept the first two. So there is no benefit to having three letters submitted on your behalf um, unless you do fall into that exception category. Um, 
when you're thinking about who you want to ask uh, to write your letters um, or which letter writers to ask, probably um, <laughs> the better way of thinking about it, um, think about um, someone who's well positioned to speak to both your scholarly academic achievements, so research excellence, productivity, your creativity and breadth of your interests, as well as your demonstrated leadership capacity. Um, moving on from letters of, uh, of recommendation, um, and this is this is something that comes up every year with a, a handful of candidates. Um, if you have a pending first full-time eligible position starting uh, no later than July 1st, 2024, um, but you haven't yet started, we will ask you to upload a copy of, of um of your appointment letter to your application. Uh, and we do that just really to, to make sure that you are eligible to apply. Um, all right, so moving ahead, let's look at the review process and criteria. And I promise I'm almost done here. Um, <clears throat> so as I've mentioned several times, we are strongly committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion at each stage of the application, review and selection process committees consider um, CFAR's principles of EDI. And, and we've also partnered with a third party firm to collect demographic information on all of our applicants. And as I've mentioned previously, as fluency in English is required fully to participate in our programs, our, our both our application process as well as the selection meeting happen in English. Our application review process um, starts with a basic eligibility check. Um, we'll look to make sure that each recruiting program has elected a subcommittee of program members. It's um, typically on the order of three to four members whose research areas and background and expertise, as well as geography, spans the breadth of the program. Their job is to review the research excellence, potential to contribute to the program, and the leadership potential of the applicants. Each program selection committee recommends up to five shortlisted finalists who will be invited to attend the virtual interview in March, which you all already put into your calendars. That final selection meeting, um, which happens on March 20th and 21st, um, is for the, the up to 20 across the four recruiting programs uh, shortlisted members. Interviews are conducted by an independent and diverse committee of academic researchers, experienced leaders in areas such as policy or government, uh, communications and leadership development. There, there may be CIFAR uh, advisors or program members, former uh, global scholars on that committee, but none of them will be from programs that are currently recruiting. The final selection is completely separated from and walled off from the, the recruiting programs. The selection committee evaluates candidates on their communication skills, their capacity and motivation to engage with peers across disciplines, and their potential leadership and impact. Part of the reason that we um, that we give the dates for the interview in advance is that there is a um, uh, there, there is both an individual, but also a group component to the interview process because we are looking for how people engage um, across and, uh, and between our networks. Some other key dates as well uh, that you may wish to note, one of which amazingly is now a week uh, in the rear view mirror. Uh, the call for applications opened last week on August 30th. So that means you should all be able to download all of the full materials if you wanna work offline. Um, it closes on October 30th, again at 11.59 Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, by January 31st of next year, short, we anticipate that shortlisted finalists will have been notified uh, to have their virtual meeting uh, and interview scheduled on March 20th and 21st for final notification, we are hoping, before the end of March 2024. 
So for more information, uh, you can download the detailed program overview at cfar.ca slash global scholars. Um, you can contact us and our email address is there on the screen. I want to thank you so much for sticking with it. I, I know I'm a bit, uh, bit long winded here. Um, and we are going to move ahead into, um, into breakout groups. Looking forward to, to talking further in a minute. Thanks, everyone.